DNG, a former gangster, and Dr. Koa have fallen in love and are living together, but the two are soon about to face a challenge to their romantic relationship. It takes place with the arrival of Then, the brother who was Koa's lover. The story between the three then unfolds. Koa and DNG have been dating and living together with wedding rings for quite some time. Early in the morning, DNG cooks for Koa, who has to go out to work. Koa has also recently co-financed a new clinic. Although he found his new job a bit strenuous and hard, he was happy to have DNG by his side. That day a new surgeon, Dr. Kong, comes to the hospital, but for Kong's first impression Koa is not so good, because Kong complained that he didn't have a separate office lounge in addition to the facilities in the facility. Even some of the stationery missing from the table was asked for Koa's help in picking it up. This makes Koa, who is already busy at work, just about bright enough her white eyes. Koa went to buy lunch boxes during lunch break. He then went to the cafe where DNG worked to express his desire to dine with his lover. It also envied DNG's single dog male colleagues on the side. While waiting for DNG to handshake the making of a drink for himself, just one ungrateful wildflower tried to hook up with Koa. Even when Koa flashed the wedding ring on her hand, she was indifferent. In the end, it had to be DNG who saw it and went up to kiss Koa to declare his sovereignty. That's what made Wildflower blink away and self defeating indignation that all the good men were taken by men. After dinner, Koa says goodbye to his loved ones and goes back to his work. I didn't expect Kong to talk about a previous case, said while singing a song that made Koa feel uneasy and sighed. Kong's action puts Koa in a bad mood at work that day and he returns home devastated. A whole lot of distraction while DNG was talking to him. Making DNG feel a little odd about it. At night Koa has nightmares. He dreams that his brother, who has been away from home for a long time, returns home and assassinates DNG. This dream alone scared Koa awake the whole thing in a state of shock. DNG woke up on the side as well, soothing the pillow of his writing's nightmare. With DNG's concern, Koa also slowly finds her way back to her senses. I couldn't help but think of the memories of proposing to him at that time during my talk with DNG. All he wanted was for DNG to stay by his side like this and nothing more. The next day, DNG wakes up early to make breakfast for Koa. After Koa goes out, he takes advantage of this period to go out to the market to buy leafy vegetables. I didn't realize that when I came back, I saw an unfamiliar figure standing in front of my house. He went up to him and inquired only to find out from the swaggering mouth of the other that he was Koa's brother then. Then has been looking at DNG all sorts of ways since this entry. He first inquired about DNG's relationship with his brother. Then he mouths the poorly educated DNG who must have known that Koa was a high roller. I've been stalking my brother for the sake of honor and wealth. DNG, as usual, would have punched him. But he held back his anger and called Koa. Tell him to find a way to get home. Or he'll be waiting to collect for his foul-mouthed brother. Koa immediately took leave from her co-worker Kong and returned home. It was thought that the two had completely fought on the way home from driving him. I didn't expect to see each of the two men at peace with each other when I entered. Even co-worker Connor rides right behind him. She also pulled her hands over the luggage and seemed to be quite intimate with him. It turns out that the patient Kong had said he saved was Koa's brother Then, so Kong entered Koa's home in that capacity. Koa feels that the relationship between Kong and Then is very delicate. Taking advantage of being alone with Kong, he curiously inquires about their relationship. As a result, Kong changed his face when no one was pressed. He coldly asks Koa to know that he is Then's physician. There is no need to be informed about the rest of it as an older brother. The day coincided with the time when Koa was honoring his parents. DNG, a virtuous wife and mother, quickly prepared the supplies and incense for the ancestor sacrifice. Then, who had settled his luggage, also came forward to burn a piece of incense and pay homage when he was informed. Koa was flirting with DNG while he was worshipping. Then was expected to be embarrassed. Then, however, said he had seen it all earlier in his life in Thailand. This allows his brother and DNG both to be at home, without having to worry too much about his feelings. That's what he said with his mouth. But, when DNG asks about Koa and Then's past during the meal, Then then spoke up against Koa's will to object. This makes DNG realize that Koa's first love was actually Then, and the reason for their breakup was because Koa's adoptive parents knew about it and broke it up. The current subject and ex now live under the same roof. There's also such a gripping breakup process that inevitably makes DNG feel a little bad in his heart. Afterwards, when Koa comes to coax the subject, DNG makes an appointment with him, telling him never to hide anything from himself again. Koa is heard swearing that he has told everything he should know except this matter of concealment. DNG then forgives Koa, feeling a little uncomfortable. Kung comes to disturb the loving couple and asks where the nearest pharmacy is. After he gets the approximate address, he leaves to go out the door. And in his latter step, he changes to then having something to find. Then asks Koa to go over 
and check the room on the grounds that there is something wrong with the lighting in the room. Then is showing that he is still in love with Koa when he is alone in a room with a man. Only now he has to accept the fact that Koa has someone else. He walks out of the room on the pretext of going out to get Koa's tools. As soon as he turned around then changed to another expression to find DNG. He can't tolerate the position of Koa's sidekick being someone else at all. There is a difference between the whole generous and sensible look when facing Koa. Then's disdain for DNG was evident in his words and behavior during his private conversations with him. Then once again talks about DNG's academic qualifications and intentionally knocks over his hard-earned melon and fruit plate and took advantage of the somewhat exasperated DNG who was about to go and organize the mess all over the floor. He pressed his hand hard against the broken glass. The sound commotion brings Koa out to check on the situation. And as soon as he reaches the kitchen, he sees DNG's hand bleeding profusely. An anxious Koa then rushes DNG to the living room and rummaged through the medical kit at home to clean and bandage his wounds. Eyeing the unavailable Koa worried about the object in front of him, then went alone and silently to the kitchen to take away the incriminating evidence of his crime and went upstairs. As soon as he entered the room, he began to have hysterical fits. DNG hears then going crazy upstairs and asks Koa if he wants to check on his brother. But Koa, after learning that the accident that just happened was presumed to have nothing to do with Dan, he then stated that he cares more about DNG than his brother and would rather stay by DNG's side and not go anywhere. He doesn't want to go home and see Koa getting all mushy with DNG. Dr. Khan, who was wandering in the park on his way home from buying medicines, was thinking of enjoying the leisure of one person, but it didn't take long to sit down. Before I heard DNG's co-workers searching for him with a loudspeaker because the cake was maligned, in order to stop his disturbing behavior, Khan can only pay for the cake to get back the serenity that the environment deserves. Afterward, he even did a loving job of sending cakes to children he saw on the street. Once back at Koa's house, Khan goes upstairs to check on Than. As soon as he enters, he sees that Than is having a seizure. He rushed up to him and brought out pills and a glass of water for Than to take. Then he stayed by Than's side every inch of the way and watched as his condition stabilized and he drifted off to sleep. The next morning, Than was back on his feet and woke up early to cook breakfast for everyone. Khan said goodbye to everyone early to go to work after breakfast. Before he left, he reminded Than to remember to take his medication on time. Hearing that his brother wants to take medicine, Koa inquires curiously. He also said he would go home early today because he was worried about DNG not getting along with Dan. But as soon as he just left, then gave DNG the cold shoulder. Apart from being jealous of DNG forcing his way into something that belongs to him, he further said that he would demand from Koa to take back and inherit the house which was left to Koa by his parents. Since then is imperative. This leads to DNG worrying over Koa. He told his co-workers at the coffee shop that he knew Koa's personality was not one to argue. In the end, it will surely be a compromise to accede to Than's request for a clean slate. But as soon as he thought about it, DNG felt bad for Koa again. He felt that Koa had suffered enough and wanted to do what he could to help in this matter. Than dated Koa earlier in his life as his parents were against him. So I ran away to a foreign country and stayed away for six years. But in the process, he was unable to play the piano due to an injury that caused his hand to gradually lose its ability, losing a lover on top of not being able to continue chasing your dreams. Khan, the physician who healed him, is naturally upset with Koa, who put Dan through a lot of torture. Upon seeing Then again, after his illness was affected by the onset caused by what happened to Koa, he also reviews his cold disregard for Koa in no uncertain terms when he works with her. Even when Koa finished his work and said goodbye to him, that he would see him at home for dinner in the evening, Khan then asks Koa not to try to get close to him at work. As soon as Koa comes back, then is waiting in the living room. He takes out the contract and wants Koa to sign to transfer the house back to him. DNG, who had heard the conversation between the two in the stairwell, was the first to jump in with an opposing view. He tore up Dan's agreement. He went on to say that Dan was unwilling to return home to see his parents when they died one after the other. He said something that raised Dan's blood pressure. Dr. Kong comes to the coffee shop where Tuan works to buy a cake. Meeting Kong again, Tuan feels that he is more kind and courteous. And the first time he met him, he took an unexpected liking to him with it. It's just too bad. Kong forgot about having bought Tuan's cake when it was delivered. This left Tuan feeling a little deflated by this. Kong, who has come home from buying a cake, gives the dessert to Then. After knowing that Then is depressed and not taking his medication because of Koa, he is there to advise Then to do what he says if he wants to win back Koa's heart. On the other hand, Koa ran to coax his wife after DNG went upstairs in anger. He apologizes to DNG that his mind is made up. But moving away from here and the future might make DNG suffer after him. DNG has been in worse environments before. Although he felt bad for Koa's decision, he was willing to follow Koa since he wanted to do so. 
So the two quickly repaired their relationship and celebrated their third anniversary with some clouds and rain directly on the bed in their dorm room. The next morning Kong visits the cafe again. Tuan hadn't even opened for business yet, but made an exception for Kong to serve him a meal straight away. Afterwards, Kong left his phone number when he left to provide him with exclusive delivery service. The day after the fight then changed into the good brother again. Not only did he apologize to Koa for his capricious words last night, he also prepared breakfast for him and DNG. However, all of the exterior work shows its true colors as soon as Koa leaves. It was so bitchy that he dumped DNG's meal right into the kitchen waste. He even breaks into the duo's room. While DNG is out working at a cafe, he perversely sucks up and touches clothing bedding containing Koa positions. On this day, Koa wore Kong to work to check the stock of alcohol, but an emergency patient came in just before the end of the day. It told Koa that the patient was accidentally poisoned after medical treatment. Originally, Koa was going to rush into the operating room to save her life, but Kong refused to let her in. This left Koa feeling quite remorseful in the face of the fact that it had made a major blunder, and while he waited outside the door trying to look at the wedding band to find a sense of belonging, he realized that he had lost the wedding ring he had been wearing. Tuan's descent into unrequited love is soon apparent to DNG when Tuan asks him to tell him how he and Koa are still in love after three years. DNG tells him not to fall in love with him yet. Wait until you're sure the other guy feels the same way he does. After returning home from work, then is seen making soup again. He wasn't easy. DNG Sophie spoke out and said dinner is fine for him to handle. Then didn't say no after hearing that. He wisely stepped aside, then started taking cell phone photos to document various DNG hand injury clones in his photos. Koa who made a big mistake, gets yelled at by Kung afterward. However Koa, who usually never mixes up his tools, felt something was wrong. He went back to the storage room again to check the medicines. After his second inspection, he did find a problem with the incoming drug in the box. Kung counts out Koa over the patient. He even blames Koa for Than's present illness. But when confronted with Than's problem, Koa says it's beyond him. Now he could only do his duty as a brother. The rest could not be given. It leaves Kung with mixed feelings after hearing it so much so that he hands out and doesn't want to go home early. As he is settling down in the park, he meets Tuan, who is returning home from work and comes up to talk to him. After being angry and scolded at the hospital today, a tired Koa returns home only to find that DNG has clearly injured his hand. He insisted on cooking and waiting until he returned. It was supposed to be a way of feeling grateful for the kindness shown to him by his virtuous wife. Instead, Koa is furious about this and takes out his grievances for the day on the innocent DNG. And that's why the two had a big fight over this trivial matter. And naturally, the one who picked up the slack was then, who looked at the two with displeasure. The argument between the two extended from the kitchen to the bedroom. DNG, when realizing that Koa is not wearing a wedding ring, walks away thinking that he doesn't value their relationship. He angrily decided to sleep in separate rooms tonight, going to the living room to sleep on the couch himself. On the other hand then, after seeing the two suspected to be in separate rooms, started the plan to be implemented tonight. He sprayed the side of his neck with the hallucinogen he'd previously asked Khan to trust him with. Then she enters her brother's room while Koa is alone in his room, claiming that she's not feeling well. He is going to mess up while Koa is checking him out, and then does score, getting Koa to inhale a hallucinogenic amount leading to mistaking him for DNG. While the two are making out, Khan runs away in the middle of the night because he can't stand the sight of them together. Before leaving, he even hinted to DNG in the living room that he should not keep mosquitoes here. DNG was thinking of going back to show kindness to Koa with a soft heart, only to open the door and see Koa making out with her brother. He immediately went into a rage and pulled the two apart and manhandled Dan for a beating. Koa came to his senses as DNG pushed him away. He stopped DNG from preventing him from inflicting pain on Dan. The move broke DNG's heart when he saw it. Finally he left home with a disappointed look in his eyes. Kong comes to the park again in the middle of the night, lonely, and calls Tuan's phone. I didn't expect Tuan, the love brain to come to the appointment without even thinking about it. This leads Khan to ask him if Tao has a crush on him. I was having a good conversation with Khan, but Tuan had to go back to the store to check it out because DNG called. On the way out, Tuan also kisses Khan to make his feelings clear, then say goodbye to Khan again before leaving reluctantly. By the time Tuan arrives at the store, all he sees is DNG, who is heartbroken over his love, crying and collapsing on the table. He asks DNG what was happening, and he didn't want to say it explicitly. Seeing him like this Tuan had to officially spit it out as well. He had this look as if he was trying to discourage him from falling in love. DNG has not returned home for the night and Koa waits at home for DNG to return. When Than's plan fails, he blames Kong, who has just returned home. He blames Kong for moving his otter and nearly loses his mind and strangles him. Afterwards, he asks Kong to bring him some sacred oil for the spell. And a loud warning that next time, 
there will be only success and no more failures. DNG doesn't come home. Koa is already anxious inside. Came to work at the hospital and also hoofed it to deal with yesterday's alcohol mishap. This chick reveals that the extra alcohol was brought along with the cake when Tuan delivered it. This leaves Koa, who has no outlet for his anger, approaching the cafe and shouting at Tuan to ask him who he's working for. The commotion also does alarmed DNG to let him out to protect his friends. Koa gets even more wound up when he sees DNG siding with his friend. He said meaningfully that the only person who knew about his trip was DNG. He suspects that he is trying to harm himself because he is jealous of Then These words also completely broke DNG's heart. It is only afterwards that Tuan learns about Koa and Ten's relationship from DNG. Although he tries to help Koa, DNG is not willing to accept it. And after the conversation, he has to go home to get his luggage and leave the store, and asks Tuan to accompany him home. Koa realizes that his mouth is misplaced and he regrets that he spoke harshly to DNG. That night he Saturday in the living room waiting for the late DNG to come home. It was hard to wait for the knock on the door to come, and immediately realized that it was DNG who had returned. So he happily went up and out to meet the door. DNG came back to his room and took out his suitcase, dragging it along with him. As soon as he sees that DNG is planning to leave Koa, he gets scared and goes up to DNG and hugs him for mercy. The two pulled all the way from the bedroom to the living room. Then claps his hands as soon as he hears that DNG is separating and leaving. DNG wasn't going to give him a good look at all either. He straight up chokes him himself for not being as sick as then to the point of pestering people who always get themselves hurt. It then dumped Koa no matter how much he shouted and left the house. As soon as DNG leaves, then immediately begs for peace telling Koa that he will never leave him. But this peace-seeking maneuver Koa didn't appreciate at all. He yelled directly at him that the person he loves now is DNG also as long as he stays around. What about the relationship with Then? He doesn't want to continue and bluntly tells him to die for it. As soon as DNG leaves, Then's illness also flares up, but he doesn't care in the face of his own suffering. Instead, he wanted to hurry back to his room to cast a spell on the altar while DNG was there. His attending doctor, Khan, is distraught and helpless and rushes to stop him from behaving like a maniac. The movement of the two also startles Koa, who has been left alone by DNG. In order to take care of Then, Khan doesn't move an inch from his bed to make sure that Then is properly quiet and resting. Tuan calls Khan during this time, but Khan ignores them and turns on Do Not Disturb. It didn't take long for Koa to be approached by the relevant people for questioning at the clinic for the sickness and safety bulletin. Although DNG has left the house, he still worries about Koa as soon as he hears that he is in trouble, especially when it transpires from Tuan that he helped Kong transport medicine to the Koa clinic with his love brain. It is then associated with Kong framing Koa. Tuan's side also comes to his senses quickly after realizing he's being used. This search for DNG led to Then's room. He failed to find Koa who had long gone out to be investigated by the prosecutors. He was also evicted by Khan, who was looking for someone to evict him for trespassing. As DNG is about to leave, he is stopped by Tuan as he descends the stairs, only because Tuan accidentally glanced at the altar in Dan's room. He thinks he has attracted something unclean and fears that it has affected the Koa. However, their conversation is overheard by Khan through the wall. It also made him wary of the two men who had gotten suspicious. After a discussion between the two, Tuan decides to break into Koa's house alone. He wanted to see if he could help DNG figure out Then's altar to see how to break it. Tuan brings a cake and coffee to Khan, who is going out to make peas. Khan, of course, knew he had something else in mind for this trip, so he made a bet with him. If he could hold out against the bright sun until he came back, he's then willing to forgive Tuan and be friends again. Tuan's side is also stupid, so he literally waits in front of Koa's house in the sun until he called DNG before he couldn't take it anymore and fainted and fell to the ground afterward. As soon as Khan comes back and sees Tuan on the ground, he takes him back to the house to rest. Tuan enters the door without incident due to misfortune, and as soon as the man is sober, he goes straight into Then's room. He didn't realize that Khan had caught him red-handed just as he was rummaging through the items on the altar. Seeing that Tuan is so ungrateful, Khan intends to force him. It didn't take long for Tuan to get the drop on him before he capitalized on the opportunity to roll over and put Kong on his back. Afterwards, he waited for DNG to come to his rescue and escaped from Kong's clutches. Tuan and DNG are back inside the coffee shop and Tuan, who looks away, does not fall into the sadness of his lost love. Instead, he returns DNG his Koa's missing love ring. He thinks then used it for spell casting. Also he took the perfume out and asked DNG to send it for testing. Witnessing Kong trying to force himself on Tuan, Tan is disgusted with him for doing so. The result is tolerated by Khan, who has always been a comradely man. He dislikes him back for not having the power to control what he should do, because he had loved him enough for so many years, and if he hadn't had to give him hope, he shouldn't have ordered himself. Koa, 
who had his medical license revoked, looked haggard, Tuan then invites Koa into the house first, and then leaves the two of them alone, as Koa has recently suffered a recurrence of her stomach, also due to stress, he weakly asks DNG to come home and cook dinner for him making DNG's heart soften and agree, afterwards, DNG also took out the test report of the perfume and showed it to Koa, as soon as she saw the content, Koa became furious and quickly decided to return home to question Kong, the man who started it all. Kong has no heart at all to hide in the face of Koa's accusations. He looks at Koa with a disinterested look on his face and almost punches him in the face. Thanks to Anna's side, Dan had a relapse. This is what allows the two to briefly stop fighting, to send Dan back inside to recuperate first. After Kong brings medicine to Than, Koa, who had been PW and ED once, then took the medicine as soon as he could to check the ingredients. That look nearly set his sanity on fire once again, because the ingredients of the drug Khan took actually had addiction causing morphine added to them. Koa accuses Khan of why he, being a doctor, has prescribed these medicines to Khan. Khan heard this and also retaliated defiantly do. You think your brother doesn't spend money on medical treatment and medication? He made a comment that shook Koa up, and when confronted with a question, asking him about his own hallucinations mistaking 10 for DNG. Kong also returns to Koa stating that it wouldn't be like this if it didn't have a tiny bit of thin in his heart. These words were heard directly into the ears of DNG, who was eavesdropping nearby, and directly caused DNG to feel chills after hearing them. After that, you choose to leave the house again and go back to the coffee shop with Tuan after their conversation. The next day, he will take a flight out of Vietnam for treatment abroad, then decides to continue to rely on Kong that night after much thought. He opens his mouth and asks Kong if he would like to accompany him abroad. After getting a nod from Kong he hugged Kong. The move also finally gives Kong a glimmer of hope after years of bitter love. The next morning, Dan and Kong said goodbye to Koa after breakfast. Before they left DNG also rushed over to see them off one last time. Then also apologizes and is forgiven for sabotaging him and Koa. Despite Dan's departure, DNG can go back to spend time with Koa because he feels that he can beat the white moonlight in Koa's heart no matter how hard he tries. He is also upset about this, and stays at the store after work with Tuan to drink and complain about it. And all these words were overheard by Koa, who had come looking for him, DNG for not being able to cross the threshold of his own heart. Hardly, he asks him to end the relationship and takes off his ring and gives it back to Koa. He even said, before separating from Koa, that it might not be Koa's Cinderella. It was thought that this was the end of their relationship. Good thing Koa's side has no intention of giving up on DNG, unable to practice medicine due to his own license suspension for a year. He applied for a job at the coffee shop and got it with Tuan's help. How Kung Koa reversed the relationship and fall in love with DNG again after that.